How can knowledge gained through EL be integrated and mobilized? The knowledge gained through various forms of EL is more valuable when it can be shared and used both by external partners and by students. For partners, a significant focus of EL is to access knowledge and skills that can be used in their business. For students, translating their experience to future EL and job opportunities will be crucial. And for faculty or staff, being able to share EL news and results within an institution, professional field, and the broader community can be an important practice. It's important to consider ways that different stakeholders can engage in knowledge mobilization around experiential learning opportunities and possible limitations and challenges that may need to be accounted for. So the course that I teach, it starts in third year. So my students are coming in on a bi-weekly basis. And what we do in this course is we work with health professionals in the community. So I've pre-identified a number of different projects with the community partners. And then I identify a number of students to be in the course. And then they choose the project that they would like to be involved in. And from there, I have workshops together with the students and the health professionals. And they talk about the issues that they have in the community and then the students work with them through a set methodology to identify what the issue is, what are the root causes, and then actually engage in interventions and evaluation of changes. So some examples of what these projects would look like might be things like falls prevention, uh, another one would be infection control in the emergency department. A few others are in the community, so one is looking at uh, seniors living in independent uh, housing and some with public health as well. If you think about it from a resource perspective, it's an absolute tragedy to have 50 graduate students working on environmental issues that aren't real. So working on a project that's for the sake of school when you have a bunch of clients around the region who can't afford to get this kind of work done. So we've done an enormous number of projects across the region since the beginning of the program. Uh, but I'm going to tell you today about one specific one that we're working on right now. The city of Welland was presented with a challenge a couple of years ago when the Atlas landfill landed on their doorstep. And so what this was is it was a hazardous waste landfill that Atlas had been using for many years to dump slag as part of their production. The challenge is it was extremely close to the Welland River, um, highly contaminated site, and it became the city's obligation to clean it up. Uh, sites of that magnitude were obviously very expensive to clean up and they didn't have the budget to do that. So they looked for a creative solution and found one when Walker Industries came and said, you know, in, in a partnership scenario, they'd be willing to clean up the site if they could use it then for their landfilling operations. So part one of the project was born and that happened and it's been ongoing since that time. Walker's has been using it as a landfill. The landfill is very close to its useful life and as a result they're beginning to look at closure plans and that's where we stepped in. So this has been a, a site of challenge for the city and they were looking for solutions about what they should do with it uh, after the closure happened, looking for public acceptance of a potential conversion to parkland and looking at someone to help them walk through some of the legal steps that would be required for landfill closure remediation of a contaminated site, conversion to parkland. So that's where we came in. And so this project spans six of our courses currently. Um, we are doing a phase one environmental site assessment as part of our contaminated sites project. We have done a PR project where we did a public open house to get public feedback on potential options for the project. We are doing an ecological restoration design for the project and we're doing the open houses now that the design selection has happened. So our intent is to be able to, to kind of walk this through everything from presentations to public outreach to technical sampling and analysis to a phase two environmental site assessment to a risk assessment to closure. And at the end, the students will not only have made a number of connections and many important partnerships around the region, they'll also have a portfolio of complete projects that they can take to an interview and say, here's, here's just a sample of what I can do for you.